It was, How are you looking so slim then? Is it depression? It was, yeah, that's what it is. Morbidly <laughs> obese, that's my phrase. You know, one day you just see yourself in the mirror, you think, hold on a minute, I can see where this is going. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd better start knocking it on the head, really, and uh, trying to get to the gym and eating healthy and that. The other thing I've noticed since the last time we met on the TV is you've got new teeth. You're like Mr. Ed. What is it? Yeah, well, I had them straightened. That's what, that was the big thing I did. With Because uh, about five, when was it? About five or six years ago. No, longer than that. Probably about ten years ago. I got um, I got beat up in Manchester, which is everybody's. You know, that's what everybody happens at some point. <laughs> and so I had about three or four that were a bit discoloured and a bit... So, and again, it was just something I noticed on the telly and I thought, right, I'm going to get them scrubbed up and straightened a bit back to normal back to how how I'd like them to be so are you going to be the Joan Rivers of comedy where you're going to have it all tucked and sucked and pulled back yeah yeah no not at all (laughs) look look how young I look still I'm I'm so tired I still I mean I'm 28 so but I I look about 34 I reckon that's what I looked at myself the other day I thought there's nothing like my wife's just had twin girls there's nothing like four hours sleep to you get up in the morning and the bonus of four hours sleep is you get to see what you're going to look like in the future (laughs) (laughs) and you're old oh hello it was interesting I had Dara O'Brien in the other day and I thought he was in his 60s he's uh, yeah he's lost a bit of weight I think that all comics have just got to a point where they think hold on a minute we're going to die so let's try and lose some weight here and everyone's do- everyone's at it it's interesting though it's the only ones that have gone from the road to TV that seem to lose weight I think mm. being on the road and being a comedian and being fat is part of the course isn't it I think there's there's a lot of you know chubby comics I think and certainly when you're driving back at four o'clock in the morning there's nowhere <laughs> to buy a salad you know you have to just get a ginster's pasty or whatever so yeah I think what, and then once you get in telly and, and somebody's often a lot someone's got to fetch dinner for you you know so they go what do you want for dinner you can't go pasty <laughs> you know you can't do that you have to go chicken salad <laughs> even though you don't want one you'd rather have a pasty it's all going really well for you and I think it's a lot to do with me to be honest since you were on my yes. programme it seems like everything's taken off do you know what? A lot of people have said that actually. That's where they've. That's they bought. They went. We bought your tickets after we heard John Alex's show. It was uh, yeah. So I can. All, I've only got you to thank really. I make sure you get mentioned in the the biography. If you can make ten people laugh, you can make hundred people laugh, and that's the idea. It's just the hardest thing is getting people in, you know, and buying and getting them to buy the tickets. That's the difficult bit. Once they're in, that's the easy bit. You're not trying to be aggressive or too political. I mean, you talk about net curtains and things like that. Well, yeah, I've not put net curtains into the set yet, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, I suppose just, you know, just normal stuff, you know, family and, and and life and that. And I've never really had any aspirations to be, you know, political comic or satirical or, or discuss. I mean, obviously I talk about the news on 8 out of 10 cats, but a lot of that is, you know, a topical story and just way of going, well, I'll tell you a funny thing and then just crowbarring <laughs> something in, like, or mentioning something. Or well, just my opinion on the news a lot of the time is not necessarily satirical, it's just about the news. So, um, yeah, I've never really... Everyone seems to like it. Well, the people that come and see me like it. You know, people know in before they come and see us, when they've seen us on telly, I'm no different than when you come and see me live. That is me. You know, that's the that's the way it works. So you're not seeing, like, a watered-down version of me on the telly, and then you come and see me live and I shock you, or vice versa. Um, you, what I am on the telly is what I, what I am, you know, live, and, and people like it, and, uh, you know, the people... But, and it's selling out, and, and, and hopefully the DVD will do all right. I think it'd be a nice surprise, though, if you're honest. We were talking about this before the interview. Maybe come on with a large organ and give them a number or something. I'd love to close with a song. I mean, I went to see Lee Evans, and he does it, doesn't he? He finishes with a song. And uh, and that's what they did it back in the day. They used to finish with a song. Peter, of course, he does a little tune at the end. Um, Bill Bailey's the whole thing, singing and that. I would absolutely love to. <laughs> when it becomes a little bit cool, I think Rob Brydon does as well, actually. I think he finished with a number. Um, maybe I'd need to be just another step up the ladder before you can get away with it I think uh, that's 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 what it feels like getting away with being able to have a little sing song what's your favourite song at karaoke then what could there be at the end of the show I bang out a little bit of a Tom Jones number <laughs> to be honest I'm a Tom Jones fan I uh, it'll be a, it'll be Till or something like some, some green, green Grass of Home that could work maybe I don't know it'd be nice like in the in the back in the day you know they all used to finish it You'd, my granddad used to have album Bernard Manning albums not of his stand up of his singing he'd have an album of Bern- <laughs> Bernard Manning's Christmas songs and it was all these songs about healing the world and like how nice it was little baby Jesus is here and then you're like thank god he's not done any of his jokes on there just his <laughs> just his singing he'd do like my kind of town you know he'd be like my kind of town Burnley is wherever wherever he was that night you know my kind of town St Helens is <laughs> not every it didn't always rhyme to be fair oh well that's that's really nice of it I mean to be honest with you 
it's not really fuss because once you're in, you're in, and you you know it's not like the cinema where if you leave before like halfway through, you get your money back. That's it. You're in. You're strapped in, and you may as well stay to the end and get your money's worth. I always say on stage, I say because my shows are long as well as you as you remember. Um, you know, often I mean a proper Ken dot it up second half. You know, and uh, <laughs> and this this year they have been quite long. So I mean, the, the DVD I had to cut down from nearly three hours to 85, 90 minutes, and. You know, I say to people, I say, I'm like, my comedy is like an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's not all brilliant, but there's loads of it. (laughs) We'd better do some questions that I did last time, because listeners who didn't hear that will want to hear. What were you like as a child? Were you funny? No, not really. I mean, I meet mates from school now, and they go, I can't believe you're a comedian. (laughs) You know, like, everyone sort of, you hope, they go, oh, that's exactly the job I thought you would end up doing. My mates go... I'm surprised you're still alive, to be honest. That, that's what my mates look at me. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, I was a bit of a smarty pants like that, you know, and uh, I had a couple of really good teachers, I think that's what it was, and that, and they sort of um, humoured me a lot rather than put me down. And um, and that, that I think that helps. That sort of it means you grow in confidence a little bit. And as certainly at that age where, you know, you could go either way, you know, sort of 14, 15, you could end up, Prime Minister or some sort of serial killer. Anything could happen. So, um, you know, luckily I ended up uh, as, as a comic like... And, I mean, I started only a few years after that. I started when I was 17, so... And uh, went to university, did the two at the same time and uh, trained, you know, to be an actor and all these other things. And uh, But stand-up was always the thing that I enjoyed the most. What I noticed about you, and I've seen you a couple of times live and having watched this DVD, you just do the same stuff every day as we do, yeah. but you're able to make it funny... There's nothing extraordinary in your life. You just no. live in every day. How do you do that? How do you turn just an average story into real belly laughs at the end? To a certain extent, if I just told you exactly what happened in my life, you'd, you'd go, well, this is a bit boring. You know, so, um, you know, there's a there's a point where you have to mix it up a little bit or um, certainly that sort of, um, you know, wit of the staircase sort of thing where you, you think, oh, I should have said that in that situation. And the thing with normal people who are not comedians, they... Um, you know, if something happens and on the way home they think of something funny they should have said, then that sits too late. Whereas you're, when you're a comic, you said that. You know, that's the difference. You might have been on your way home when you thought of it, but when you tell that story next, that is exactly what you said. So that's, you know, there's a bonus in that and a bonus in telling it and adding little bits and bobs. And a lot of it, you can't really just come on stage and say, have you noticed this? Because I have. <laughs> and everyone goes, oh yeah, and we have as well. Can't wait to see this on the DVD. You have to do something with it. You know, Michael's very good at that. I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. Um, Peter Kay's good at it. And, and the, 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 you've got that observational thing of being able to um, spot something and find the humour in it. I mean, I've got a list of stuff at home where I think I've, I've, I've observed it, but I've not yet been able to make it funny or turn it into something. At the moment, it is still just something I've observed. You know, so. It's been an interesting year in terms of TV because obviously 8 out of 10 cats has been the thing that people recognise you from. And then you did the thing on the BBC with Firm Britain. How was that? It was good, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was um, it was one of those things where, the, you know, the BBC, BBC One come knocking and say, we well, do this thing on... Um, well, it went out on Saturday tea time. It went out on Thursday, like early evening. And uh, they were like, it's not really a comedy quiz like the other stuff you've done. It is just, a, you know, it's a quiz, but you can occasionally say something funny if you want and <laughs> they um, really put it like that in the contract sort of yeah that's basically <laughs> what it said if you can be bothered um but i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed doing it and i met some really you know like people i would never get to meet john craven and you know dame pauline quirk of course and uh you know some people you know lawrence lowell and bowen you know and uh it was good it was nice to do a quiz show with no pressure to be honest with no you know, if eight out of ten cats is still, it's not about getting the questions right. It's about being funny and, and and being daft. Whereas with that, it was just a quiz. It was like question of sport more than anything else. You know, but just about telly and uh, and it was good. So hopefully it'll be they'll they'll make it again and see what happens. And I think you're brilliantly suited to that. I mean, I look at something like Mock the Week, and I've said this to the guys themselves that it's so competitive. That's not really your thing, is it? I don't I don't really like that sort of thing. I think. It looks too hard work, that anyway, that model week. <laughs> I've seen it a few times, I think, oh, no, no. Let's put up a bit of effort in if I had to do that. Um, no, I mean, 8 out of 10 cats is, is perfect for me because, you know, you're on with other comics, but they're not all comics. And, um, you know, and we get... I mean, there was an episode last year where half the people on, including me, Sean and Jimmy, were women, you know, and that is not something you would get on any other show, any other panel show. And, 
you know, so you get your Claudia Winkleman's and, and uh, Gabby Logan's and that, and Sarah Millican's, and they come on because they know that it's not a bear pit. It's not a show that they're going to get chastised, you know, and 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 they're going to be able to get a word in edgeways, you know, and that's and that's really important, I think, and uh, and that's why I enjoy the show. Being a dad, I want to end on that. I mean, the good thing is, like, we, um, we've not told anybody uh, the names and stuff. I mean, I've told my wife. <laughs> um, that'd be awkward just twin one and twin two but um, you know we kept that so that's been nice to sort of keep that just just between the family and that and keep it private which has been and it's been great I've loved it I mean it's it's been hard coming back from a gig you know driving back for four hours and then get, you know getting home just in time for the you know for the change in the feed which takes a couple of hours and then they sleep for three hours and then you're up again and you've got to go down to London or whatever do some work so that's been hard but even that I still wouldn't swap that for what my wife has to do every single day with them. Just, you know, I did it. I did. I think I did a day when she has to go back in hospital, and uh, I had them both for a day and a night overnight. And I, <laughs> I mean, nothing freaks babies out more when they're crying than joining in. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened in the end. I just thought I'm gonna have to have a cry as well. Eh? I thought, and then well, as soon as she come back, I thought, thank God you're here. I'm, I've got to go to Newcastle. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, you're not buying this DVD for me. I'm doing all right for myself, but. There's two little babies there who, you know, really need to go to university in 18 years, and it's really for them. When you found out that you'd got two and not one, yeah. what was your initial reaction? Well, I wish I'd have got twin insurance. Have you heard about this? <laughs> no. There's a thing called twin insurance, yeah, where you where you're trying for a baby and you can insure yourself against twins. So if you do have twins, the the insurance company pays out because you've obviously got to buy two of everything. So yeah, it's it, it's the house is a mess. That's the that's the only thing. I get home and I. It, I come in, I go, I do three things. I go, why are all the lights on? It's like Blackpool Illuminations. Why is the heating on? Just put a jumper on. And why is it such? A, why is the house such a, a, a tip all the time? And I come in and then after a gig, I spend, you know, an hour tidying up. You know, and then next morning I come down, same. And it, it's not the babies because they, they can't move. So it's some, it must be my wife. I think maids, cleaners, nannies. I'm all right, to be honest. I quite like the house as it is. I don't like inviting people in. I mean, my mum comes over and helps us sometimes. Because we had some mates who were like, you get, here's a number for a nanny, here's a number for someone to look after the babies, like a night nurse and that to overnight and stuff. And um, I just, we just thought, we're all right, to be honest. What do, what, do, what do people do? This is what people do. They just don't sleep for a bit and they're a bit tired. And that means later on in life you can give them a like, proper moan at them when you're trying to get them out of bed. Says he who spends 80% of time in hotels doing live <laughs> gigs and not having to look after them. That's your all heart, aren't you, Jason? If, if only it worked out like that. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm sort of down to about two gigs a week while, while doing this tour. So I try and get back nine times out of ten. Some nights... I have a night off and I stay in London. <laughs> have a good old sleep and some room service. Congratulations on being you. I'm a huge fan. You deserve every success. Good luck with everything. All right, cheers, Alex. Nice one.